Welcome back to the Rules of Engagement. We just went over the MC vs. MVP series. Again, if you want to catch those VODs, youtube.com slash official MLGSC2. But now we're on to the Q&A section. If you have questions, tweet them at me at ISAXLAV. I'll answer them at the end of the next Rules of Engagement episode. Today for this episode, we got a couple questions. First one from Matt Hawkins. What is your opinion on Heart of the Swarm Imba? As a Terran, I'm getting lots of trash talk on the ladder by Zerg players. So one of the things I, I think it's fair to say is that a lot of the races had to, had to change their play style in Heart of the Swarm, and I think Zerg has had to change their play style the most. Um, so it, it, I think it's way too early to really uh, talk about imbalance too much. Uh, there could be potential imbalances, but the biggest difference right now is people are having to change their play quite a bit. And Zerg players especially have to change their play a lot to deal with Widow Mines. It requires a whole new style of micro, uh, as well as utilizing things like Swarm Hosts. I still have never seen anyone use Swarm Hosts remotely as powerful as they could be used. Uh, in addition to things like the new Fungal Growth, utilizing the fact that it has greater range, but of course it's a little bit harder to hit things with. You have to figure out how to predict where your opponent's going to be, similar to how you would use Psy Storm. And, and it's, just, it's a whole new skill set, and I think Zerg has the most new things to deal with because you have to react all the new things Tyrion and Protoss can do in addition to learning how to use their new abilities. Uh, so I, I think Zergs are a little bit, uh, a little bit slower to, uh, to learn the new stuff, and, and I think it's fair because there's more, more stuff for them to react to. Uh, I think it's way too early to tell. We'll see it in, in a few months. A lot of Zerg players are really frustrated right now, but I think it may be, may be just because of uh, all the new changes than to any potential bounce. Who knows, though? We'll, we'll find out soon. <laughs> Next question is going to be from Heskar Zambrono. And it says, what do you think about Oracle doing that much damage to Mineral Line? It seems Imba like Blue Flame Hellions back in the day. And that's like a really good point. It is, you know, people remember back when they saw Blue Flame Hellions destroy entire worker lines. And then people complained that it was too strong. But the key thing there, it wasn't that the Blue Flame had the potential to destroy entire worker line. It's that if your opponent defended, it didn't really matter. Uh, you know, you lose two, three Blue Flame Hellions. Who cares? It's 300 minerals. It's not that big a deal. The difference with the Oracle, it has the same insane potential to wipe out a mineral line, but I don't think it's nearly as strong as the old Blue Flame Hellions were because it's a much larger investment because it costs a Stargate, which isn't too useful in, in most mid-game situations, at least against Terran. And also, um, I mean, it, there still are some uses for Stargate, but it's not a natural tech to the powerful AoE damage. And it costs 150 gas. So if your opponent defends it with, let's say, a missile turret, one missile turret stops your ass cold. One Widow Mine stops the cold, right? If they defend it with these things and you can't do too much damage, you're going to be a little bit behind in attack game. And if you lose the Oracles, you're going to be way behind because you can't utilize the Revelation, you can't utilize them against Marines, etc. So uh, I think because it's it's um, it's a little bit easier to deal with than the Blue Flame Hellions because of its short range and because of the fact that a Protoss can't afford to throw it away. So uh, I think it's a very strong harass, but as we see in top level play now, it's actually being a little bit phased out because it's such a commitment in tech and opponents are learning how to deal with it. Next question is going to be from Michael. And it is, what do I do as Protoss when Terran expands much later than in Wings of Liberty? Tech also in order to defend drops better. Build Phoenixes? question um, mark. So I, I think what he's saying is, if a Terran expands later and they have a tech option, right? Like we saw MVP do that. We've seen a lot of Terrans do that. They get the gas first. Reactor, Factory, then Command Center, or Reactor, then Command Center, then Factory, some type of slightly later expansion with tech thrown in. So as Protoss, it's essential you know what type of tech they're doing. We saw MC utilize the Mothership Core to scout early on. That was a great way to do it. You send that in. You can try to see what they're teching to, then you know how to deal with it. Uh, one great way is um, if you fast expand, you get a quick forge. And then if you see them going tech, you build one cannon in each mineral line. That'll stop Banshee Rass, that'll stop Widowmine Drop. Very effective. You get ahead and upgrades as well. If you're opening Stargate play, of course, then you can harass before them, and you can get that damage done like we saw MC do. Uh, and then also, to defend drops better, build Phoenixes. That's something I've been playing around with a bit, and I've seen a couple other really good Protosses do it, and I think it might be able to work. The problem is, if you invest too much into Phoenixes, Phoenixes are not very useful in a straight-on engagement, unless you have a, a huge Colossal account, then they can help support those. But in the mid-game engagements, the Phoenixes aren't that great against the Marine Medivacs. So, Phoenixes can be great against drops, but you have to be really active and catch a drop before it lands. And they're not quite as good as straight on fight. So, I think if you're really good at multitasking, you can, you can make it work. But if you just want, you can play a standard Protoss style, deal with drops fine, use the Mothership Core, Photon Overcharge, that'll help defend a drop. In addition, 
to a cannon or two. And of course, just like when Celebrity, you have the extra control group that has a few stalkers, a few zealots, and that can go to help clean up small drops, big drops. That's where your main army is going to be there. That wraps up all the questions for today. Again, any questions, tweet them at me. I'll catch them at the end of the next episode. Until I'll see you guys tomorrow. Of course, 5 p.m. Eastern is going to be the last quarterfinal from the Winter Exhibition. It's going to be Thorazane versus Creator. It should be an amazing match. And following that match will be Rules of Engagement. Thank you for watching. I'll see you tomorrow.